In the history of presidential elections, one of the most tried and true aphorisms is that there will be an October surprise. Something major will happen and change the electoral calculus. It's 2020, so... Surprise! The president has COVID-19 and Biden is coughing a lot. What could COVID do to the election and the country? That's worth discussing, don't you think? Personally, I hope and pray that COVID ends soon with no more fatalities. I know that's not realistic, but what can I say? I'm a dreamer, and I have hope for the future. Set aside politics for once. These are people. They are leaders in our nation, and I don't wish COVID on anyone. I know that there's a lot of that sort of ill-wishing going on right now. Folks, wishing death on someone over political differences is ghoulish. I know that some folks don't like Trump, and I know that some folks don't like Biden. Doesn't matter who you like, don't be a ghoul. COVID is dangerous, particularly so for the elderly. 80% of those who have died from COVID are 65 years old or older. The disease also seems to affect people who are obese more readily. Obese patients are about 50% more likely to die from COVID infection. Trump is 74 and overweight. I personally hope that he truly is in excellent health other than his age and weight. If not, we will likely find out soon enough. Biden's coughing fits are concerning, too. Biden is 77. Like Trump, his doctors report him to be very healthy for his age, but he's still in the prime risk demographic. Americans need to know if he is infected, too. He's tested negative, but he needs to repeat these tests every day just to be safe. It sucks but his health is more important than his comfort. Now, in an election, if a candidate drops out, becomes incapacitated, or dies before election day, how close to election day determines what happens next? If election day is a few months away, then the candidate can be replaced on the ballot. Come October, though, the ballots have already been printed. Voting has already started with absentee voters. That's why an October surprise is so significant. It's too late to change the ticket. Naturally, any speculation on my part is based on what would likely happen. As the Washington Post points out, the deadline for certifying candidates has passed. The political parties may have procedures that allow them to nominate a replacement, but getting the replacement's name on the ballot would be functionally impossible. When this situation has resulted in past elections for other federal elected offices, those responsible for naming a replacement to the office name a replacement for a candidate if they become unavailable. That's how Jean Carnahan became senator from Missouri in 2001. Her husband died three weeks before Election Day, so acting Missouri Governor Roger Wilson announced that she would be named if her husband Mel was elected posthumously. He defeated John Ashcroft, so she became the senator until a special election two years later when Jim Talent replaced her. The rules on the succession of a president-elect who dies or is disqualified before taking office are enumerated by the 20th Amendment. Something interesting that I spotted while I was checking the 20th Amendment, if the results of the election are unknown or the president-elect cannot assume office on Inauguration Day, then the vice president-elect assumes office until the president can do so. If neither can assume office, say if the results of the election are unknown, then Congress declares who acts as president until the matter is resolved. This is covered then by the Presidential Succession Act of 1947. For a refresher, that line of succession is the Speaker of the House, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, and then the Cabinet Secretaries who are eligible to be elected president. Likely, that would mean acting President Pelosi until the election is sorted out, which would effectively remove her from office as soon as the situation was resolved, since the Speaker cannot occupy two offices in government at the same time. Other than the Vice President, no one in the line of succession can become acting president without resigning their current office. No presidential candidate has ever died before Election Day, and no president-elect has ever died before assuming office. However, a presidential candidate has died between Election Day and the Electoral College, Horace Greeley, in 1872. 
the apportionment of his electors splintered between other potential candidates from his party, despite the fact that Greeley lost the election. In 1912, James Sherman died a few days before the election. He was the vice presidential candidate for Taft, who lost. The RNC chose not to nominate a replacement due to the results, so the electors that Taft had won met and selected Nicholas Butler to replace Sherman on the ticket as a pure formality. If Trump is gone before the election, Pence becomes the president immediately. He then has less than a month to convince the American people that he's a better choice than Biden. I really don't know if he can do that, which might mean that Pence replaces James Garfield as the president with the second shortest term in office. As long as we're talking about what happens, we need to mention what happens for the challenger. If Biden is gone before the election, things are less apparent. There is no law governing who replaces the challenger on the presidential ticket. I would assume that Harris becomes the presidential nominee due to the challenge of getting names on ballots. She then has less than a month to convince the American public that she's a better choice than Trump. Again, I really don't know if she can do that, although I wouldn't be surprised if her campaign blamed Trump for Biden's death, given Trump's reluctance to wear a mask in public, something which might play well with her voters. If both are gone, then it's most likely President Pence versus Senator Harris. That makes me even keener to watch the VP debate on Tuesday. It might prove to be the best look at the two candidates who could wind up running for the Oval Office in 2020. Pence is an old-school Christian conservative, and Harris is a West Coast liberal. He will play well in rural America and in working-class areas. She will play well in cities and with women and minorities. The battleground will be in the suburbs, as he tries to convince voters that her most radical ideas are dangerous for America, and she tries to convince voters that he is just another reactionary trying to overturn Obamacare and Roe v. Wade. Americans are firmly divided over who should be elected president. This news will upend both campaigns. Naturally, anyone who tests positive will be quarantined. So far, there have been at least 11 people who have tested positive. This will put a big dent in the GOP campaign schedule, including the second presidential debate, which is scheduled for October 13th, before Trump comes out of quarantine. Will Biden match the president in reduced campaigning? I don't know, but it has been suggested. That's entirely up to Biden and his campaign staff, though. May the sick recover swiftly, and may the healthy remain so. Oh, and one more thing. The House passed a $2.2 trillion stimulus bill this week. This is a trimmed-down version of the HEROES Act. The White House is panning it. The GOP leaders in the Senate say that it has no chance of passing there. And the House is adjourned for their October recess and won't be back until mid-November, so they can't reconsider it. I'm going on record right now. Senators, pass the damn bill immediately and as is. This stimulus is desperately needed by many Americans right now, including the tens of millions of Americans who lost their jobs, lost their gig work, or can't enter the labor market thanks to COVID. Blocking this bill doesn't look like fiscal responsibility. It looks like petty gamesmanship and a lack of compassion. I'm specifically calling on my senators, John Bozeman and Tom Cotton, to demand that they vote to pass the House bill. It may not be the best bill for America fiscally, but it is the right thing to do at this critical juncture. We've had enough congressional inaction due to election stunts in the middle of a crisis. Don't blame the House, either. You argued over this bill for months while millions of Americans told you that they needed help. You kept arguing when President Trump told you to send him a stimulus bill and promised to sign it. You even kept arguing after the President issued executive orders to do by fiat some of what you were supposed to legislate in this bill and put his team in charge of negotiating with the Speaker of the House instead of your team. America is fed up with the bickering and the stalemates. Congress, do your job or we will vote for somebody who will. 